Everybody rise. Everybody rise. No, seriously, everybody rise. Yeah. In the name of the Father, the Son, and Victor Garber. See me with you. So much you may be seated. Well, that's a long time since this group's been to church. Speaking of which, I had to Google homily. And, um, <laughs> when, um, when David asked me to do this, I said I'd love to do that, and then I Googled homily. And, and what Wikipedia told me, so we know it's true, is, um, this isn't funny, guys, um, is that a homily is a commentary that follows a reading of scripture. Um, in colloquial usage, homily often means a sermon or a moralizing lecture, but I am not one to talk about morals. So, I'm not going to do that tonight, but I definitely want to look at some Sondheim scriptures. Um, I think it's hilarious that I had to Google homily because my brother's literally a priest. He's a priest. And so, um, so once a week, he presumably delivers a homily. And, and in fact, right when my older brother Andrew discovered Jesus Christ when he was in high school, um, I discovered Sondheim in middle school, and, which is actually true. And we had just moved to Pittsburgh from San Francisco, first family to ever go that way. <laughs> and, and I think we were both looking for a savior, and I found it in Sondheim. Um, I had grown up, up until that point, with a really steady diet of really sweet show tunes. My, my dad had gotten me the cassette tape to Annie when I was 10. And then, by the way, was surprised when I came out. <laughs> like, literally. But when I, when I discovered Sondheim music, I, I realized that somebody was writing with the dark chords that felt like what middle school was to me. <laughs> um, and then my voice changed. Uh, my voice started changing in 1994. I was 14. And... Uh, uh, do the math. And then and I, uh, I realized that all the roles, Sondheim roles, that I really wanted to play, were, it wasn't going to happen. I wasn't going to play Jack in Into the Woods because I couldn't hit the, yeah, Scott. And I still can't. <laughs> um, I wasn't going to play Bobby and Company, Hero and Forum. Um, but, uh, but, but luckily, um, Passion came out. And so when Passion came out, I basically hitchhiked to Sam Goody. And I, I, I brought my CD man. And I realized that with my voice being in that awkward, alto-y place, I had actually found my role, Fosca. <laughs> so, thank you. Yeah, I returned to no. And so, uh, as we know, since a homily is a commentary on scripture, um, long lead-in, I'm going to read these lyrics uh, that, that really are like scripture to me. Um, Loving you is not a choice, it's who I am. Loving you is not a choice and not much reason to rejoice, but it gives me purpose, gives me voice to say to the world, this is why I live, you are why I live. Um, you know, have any lyrics better expressed a 15-year-old gay boy in the Midwest? <laughs> <laughs> Loving you is, who I, is, is not a choice, it's who I am. I was in love with the entire lacrosse team. <laughs> I, to be alone. I wasn't alone. No one is alone. Um, <laughs> I feel like no other writer in the whole musical theater canon, or maybe any canon, um, is able to take disappointment and you know the feeling of being unloved or unseen or hurt and turn it into art more beautifully. I really believe that. Um, other songs that I sang into the mirror as the years went on and relationships changed <laughs> include Not a Day Goes By, Every Day a Little Death, and Losing My Mind. <laughs> um, and, um, I really do believe that nobody makes sorrow sound more worth it than Stephen Sondheim. <laughs> um, dancing in Gypsy and playing the bit role of Bougeron Cochon, and I didn't really appreciate that. I'm kidding. It was like, <laughs> I, had, I had one line, it was one word, it was enchanté, which I said beautifully, H was weak. Um, uh, but it was a thrill of a lifetime. Uh, it really was to, to debut in that show, which was 10 years ago right now. But I also had my disappointments along the way as a performer. And when I started to write novels a couple of years ago, um, I realized that all of the uh, time I spent in my high school bedroom, I found this vintage, it's a true story, I found this vintage um, jigsaw puzzle of Bernadette Peters' headshot. And I would do so weird. Like it puts the end piece in the basket. Um, but I would do, I would do a, a puzzle of that and listen to Sunday in the Park with George. And, and, um, and I wasn't out. <laughs> I love tennis, is my line, but I love tennis. So, um, but pro 
probably 90% of what I write about now, um, from feeling like an alien in my own hometown to uh, learning what it means to not get the part that you wanted, um, it all came from moments of total rejection in my past. And I didn't learn that from Annie. I learned it from Passion and Merrily We Roll Along and these shows that told me that without hurt and disappointment in my life, I don't think I'd have stories worth telling. Um, uh, homilies are supposed to be inspiring. So, so I want to say that in our lives as sort of New York theater people in the arts, unless you come in from out of town and then have another drink, but um, <laughs> as New York theater people in the arts, I really do think our greatest challenge is to resist cynicism. I really believe that. And I, I think cynicism is everywhere and kind of for good reason. Um, but the master class that I think every Stephen Sondheim show taught me at least is that all of the inevitable feelings of longing and sadness that kind of come up along the way, loving you is not a choice, it's who I am, um, all the predicaments that life throws us, the sun comes up, I'm losing my mind, uh, rather than turning those feelings inward into bile, if you set your troubles to music, if you, you know, throw a couple internal rhymes out there, um, you can take a sucky situation and turn it into art because regret without a forum just turns cancerous. I really think that. So I know this is sort of earnest. I know it's earnest, but Sondheim is like church to me. Um, and, and he sort of saved me as a kid. He sort of saved me as a kid. So I don't know Steve and Sondheim. Um, but when we recorded the Gypsy Cast album, he watched the movie Heathers with us in the green room. And, and every five minutes, he like, that's his life. <laughs> like, he likes it. Um, but, so I don't know if he personally, I know he's given us this art, but I don't know if he concentrates on a day-to-day -day basis on his frustrations or on his future. Um, but uh, I know that when I need to kick myself in the pants and get out of a rut, there's another scripture that I, of his that I sort of turned to as I got older, and I keep it by my desk at home, which is also my dining table. So um, and the scripture is, uh, stop worrying where you're going, move on. If you can know where you're going, you have gone. Just keep moving on. So let's raise a glass and say happy birthday, Stephen Joshua Sondheim, uh, and maybe thank him for writing not the soundtrack of our lives, but definitely the original pastel. <laughs>